Dearly beloved, we have gathered here today to say farewell to a dear friend who has passed away. We did not know that she was going to die, but she's gone, and we just have to accept that. So, let us all lower our heads in solemn memory and bid farewell to Jillian's pain tolerance. diary. Over the past few years, my pain tolerance has just plummeted. I used to be able to take spankings that were really intense. I remember one time at TASP, Princess Kelly May gave me such a long and severe strapping right in the middle of a public room that people actually remarked on it, even a few days later. That made me feel cool. It made me feel desirable. But now it seems like I wimp out after just a few strokes of wood, and I don't understand why. It's frustrating and scary. I'm scared that it makes me less valid as a spanko. I'm scared that this makes me less desirable as a play partner, or even just as a partner. My fantasies haven't changed at all. They're every bit as intense as they always were. But my physical ability to play to a degree that matches my fantasies seems to be changing, and I don't understand why. Only the other day, Daddy paddled me and I dropped to the ground after only four or five swats because it hurt so much as I sat there rubbing my barely pink bottom. I couldn't help but wonder, is my value as a spanko tied to how much pain I can take? Let's talk about pain tolerance. No, 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 but I mean, like, let's really talk about it. Because I am fully aware that what I am supposed to say right now is pain tolerance doesn't matter. A spanko with a high tolerance for pain is not cooler or more desirable than a spanko with a low tolerance for pain. Everyone's body is different and that's not only okay, it's magical. And that's all true, that's all 100% True, but I know, and you know, that that's also not entirely the whole story, right? Because it's also true that spanko bottoms with a lower tolerance for pain often do feel some insecurity about that. I feel that insecurity now too, and it sucks. I still love leather implements, but over the last few years, I've turned into a whiny little cream puff when it comes to anything that involves wood. And I know I shouldn't feel insecure. I've done the Googling, I've read the research. I know that pain tolerance has been scientifically linked to a huge number of factors, including temperature, stress, hydration, menstruation cycles, even whether or not a person has red hair. I know all of the scientific and logical reasons why pain tolerance doesn't matter, but that doesn't help me feel less insecure. Because this thing we do isn't logical, right? What's logical about magic? I've tried to figure out why my pain tolerance has changed so much over the past few years, and the best guess I can come up with is I'm just psychologically a lot happier and more sexually satisfied than I was 10 years ago when I first started going to parties and getting involved at the broader fetish communities. Back then, I was so desperate and thirsty internally that you know, I just think I needed and craved an equally intense external style of play to distract me from how sad and unsatisfied I was the rest of the time, basically. And to be totally clear, that is a theory I have about myself. I absolutely am not saying that anyone who likes to play hard is trying to fill some kind of internal void. I'm just saying that I was. It seems that my natural preferred play style isn't as intense as I used to think it was, and that's okay. I'm still getting to know myself, as we all are, and I'm glad I'm not the same person today that I thought I was back when I was 26. But some insecurity is still there. Because it's not just about me, right? I want to be happy and satisfied, but I'm not the only person in my life. There is someone else around, and I want him to be happy and satisfied too. Dun dun dun! Law and order music. <laughs> Please state your name for the record. Daniel Slitskin. Roll. I'm at top. I'm your top. Hey! This isn't about me, Chucko. 
stay focused. So you say you're a top. What kind of top exactly? I'm a spanking top. Oh, so, so that means you like to administer spankings, is that correct? Yes. Any kind of spanking? As long as it's consensual, sure. So does that mean you sometimes use implements? Yes, implements are fun. All right, paint a word picture for me here. What kinds of implements are we talking about? Are we talking about wood implements, leather implements? I guess that all of those sound good. So does this look familiar to you? Yes, that's my pattern. Hmm, very interesting. So you confess that this is your paddle. Looks pretty painful to me. Would you say that pain is an important element of a spanking for you? No, not really, no. Like, uh, right, I'm not sadistic. Like, there's nothing wrong with being a sadist, right? It's just, like, I don't fantasize about, like, pain doesn't turn me on, no. <laughs> so, so you, you fantasize about, what, painless spankings? <laughs> no, sure. no. Per per li li likely story. Likely story. Yeah, okay, look, wait, no, no, right? But what I really respond to is the idea of punishment. Painless punishment? No, look. This guy, this guy. What I respond to is the feeling of giving a proper spanking, right? So a few light taps wouldn't satisfy me, no. But like when a person has a low pain tolerance, it's actually easier for, for it to feel like a spanking has accomplished its job. So like- So you expect us to believe that you wouldn't mind at all if your submissive couldn't take a really brutal spanking. Of course I wouldn't mind. Just because you can't take a really hard spanking anymore doesn't mean you can't still be spanked and punished. Hey! It's all... Watch it, buddy. I've already said this isn't about me. This is about you and your little friend here. Are you really trying to claim that a six swat paddling would be every bit as satisfying to you as a 60 swat paddling? It could be, absolutely. We don't take kindly to liars around here, <laughs> Daniel. Look, I'm not lying. Like, this is really tricky. It's hard to explain. Like, how hard I hit you, or how many times I hit you, doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how satisfying a spanking is. So if a bottom were to have, I don't know, a super low pain tolerance, you're saying that person would still be every bit as desirable to you as a play partner. Of course. How about as a partner? Yes! Of course! Look, I love you, right? And we're both spankos. So from the second we first met, we had this connection and language and history and all that is so much deeper and more meaningful than whether I can wail away on you with a two by four for an hour. But what else do you want me to say? I want the truth! I just told you the truth! I just told you the truth! Well, it looks like we got a little storyteller on our hands here. Fuck him! So I know that logically, scientifically, and empathetically, there is nothing wrong with a spanko bottom who has a low pain tolerance. And daddy has convincingly persuaded me that there are at least some spanko tops out there for whom a low pain tolerance is not only not a deal breaker, it's not even a disappointment. But the change that I've experienced over the past few years still upsets me. Regardless of what logic and science say, regardless of what daddy says, I still wish my pain tolerance was as high as it used to be. Here's the best analogy I can make. Earlier this year, daddy and I completed an 800 mile 
through hike of the Arizona Trail. But after about 600 miles, I had a serious relapse of the medical condition I mentioned in my book, and I had to get off trail. I didn't know if I'd ever get better, and I was heartbroken. I wanted to keep hiking. By the grace of God, I got better after three nights, and I was able to get back on trail and finish the last 200 miles. But when I was sick and off trail, I knew exactly what I desperately wanted to do, and my body just said no. That's how the change in my pain tolerance feels to me. It feels like my body has started saying no to wood. But I want to make decisions about how I want to play, and I want my body to say yes when my mind and heart do. So with the disclaimer that no one ever ever needs to increase his, her, or their pain tolerance level. Here are the best tips I could find through online research and the research of my own experience on how to increase your pain tolerance, if that's what you want to do. One, warm-ups. Warm-ups, warm-ups, warm-ups. I know, I know. In fantasies and in stories, someone pulls you over his or her knee, grabs a hairbrush, and just starts wailing away. That's the dream, right? But in real life, warm-up spankings really do make it much easier to transition into more intense impact play. If you love the headspace of a certain implement that you struggle to take in real life, maybe try to begin your scenes with a long hand spanking first. This gives your body time to adjust and and gives your bloodstream plenty of time to drink in all those yummy endorphins before you move on to more serious implements. Two, exercise. Studies have found that both yoga and aerobic exercise can increase a person's pain tolerance. I'll put links to those studies in the description, but if you're physically able to do it, exercise is good for a lot of things, right? Like maybe an increased pain tolerance will just be a nice side bonus to all the other wonderful benefits exercise brings. Three, sexual arousal. I've mentioned this before, but studies have also found that sexual arousal also significantly increases a person's pain tolerance. And I know, I know, for a lot of us, a non-sexual vibe is exactly what makes this thing we do so sexy. So I'm not suggesting you try to get yourself aroused in normative vanilla ways. Get aroused in our ways. If you're a disciplinary spanko who wants to increase your pain tolerance, or if you have a play partner who is disciplinary and wants to to increase his, her, or their pain tolerance, don't forget to really take the time you need to build your scene. Don't forget about scolding. Don't forget about headspace. If you can put yourself or your partner into the right headspace, it can have a physical effect that is downright astonishing. Four, social bonding. <laughs> I feel like there's a joke to be made with social bondage right there, but we'll stick with social bonding. I can't be the only person who has noticed that I play much, much harder at parties and other public settings. And it turns out there's a scientific basis for this too. Social bonding has found to pretty consistently increase pain tolerance across the board. This applies to exercise, swimming in cold water, sports, like everything, including BDSM. It's just easier to take a super hard spanking while surrounded by all the warmth, support, and gleeful evil pleasure of your friends. To be clear, none of this is medical advice. And please remember to listen to the natural signals our bodies send us. If you have any questions about what is or isn't safe for you, please talk to a physician. And if you're wondering how to find a kink-friendly doctor in your area, check out this video. It's somewhere up here. In the meantime, I'm here to tell you in a public internet video that my God, my rabbi, and my kindergarten teacher all could hypothetically find that every single spanko bottom and switch from bruise and blood sluts like the woman I used to be to precious little baby cream puffs like the woman I am today is awesome, desirable, valid, and most importantly, way cooler than tops. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.